Hey, this is Les with Judson Vacuum Systems, and I'd like to introduce you to a new program we have called Project Blue Book. What Project Blue Book does is we re-engineer complicated heat exchange machines and eliminate all these parts that you see here that you can't find local. This is a proprietary part. Now these are nice when they work, but once they quit working, you're going to have a hard time finding one of these. And it requires special repair personnel to repair these machines. Once we eliminate all these parts off your machine, we increase the performance of the machine, we increase the reliability of your machine, and we increase the life of your machine. See, nowadays you've got a lot of investment in your truck now. You got like 30,000, 25,000 in a truck knot. The problem is once they get some time on them, these little issues start shutting the machines down and you start requiring a lots of costly repairs. When we eliminate all these parts off your truck knot, we convert it to propane. This allows the pump to pump cold, not hot water. We eliminate blower or heat exchangers. It takes the back pressure off your blower and increases the CFM of your truck now. We also take the back pressure off your engine, which makes the engine more efficient. So that's how we extend the life of everything and the performance and the reliability. We convert to common parts that you can find at a, at a local auto parts, if possible, switches, wires, anything we can find to make the machine more reliable and more common. So now, if you have a heat exchange carpet cleaning machine that's developing issues and you've got a lot of money invested in that unit, do you now have an alternative to look at other than taking a loss, selling the machine, and buying another one just like it? So how about giving me a few minutes and take a, few look, take a look at Project Blue Book. Thank you. First thing I'd like to say before I explain Project Blue Book to you is that I am not picking out any particular manufacturer of a heat exchange machine. Heat exchange units basically are all designed the same. They all basically have heat exchangers, exhaust diverters, limit switches, relays, and lots of complicated electrical safeties. That's what you have to have to build one. If I was going to build one, I would have these same parts. It's, I'm not saying that the parts or the design is faulty. It's just that when you got to make when you build a carpet cleaning machine that's a heat exchanger, it must be a complicated machine with lots of safeties and heat exchangers and exhaust diverters. And once these units get some time on them and they're out of warranty, it can get fairly costly to keep them running. And a lot of times you have to drive a good bit, uh, reschedule jobs, and you can't really work on the machines yourself because they have proprietary parts and it's a fairly complicated design. So I just wanted to mention that, that I'm not trying to say that there's some fault in the design of a heat exchange machine. What I am saying is that you now have an alternative if it ever comes to the point that it's going to cost you a lot of money to keep your unit running. And a lot of times the parts are obsolete. You can't get parts for it. It can get very costly. Plus we increase the performance of the machine and we eliminate a tremendous amount of parts off these units that it extends the life of the unit. So now I would like to uh, explain to you exactly what we do uh, to convert the heat exchange machine into a Project Blue Book system. Here we have a unit that has a Nissan engine. Now the innovative idea to obtain heat from your system without an alternative fuel source was a great concept. But unfortunately, when we, you're designing something, to gain something, you must give up something. So basically, to gain free heat, you're giving up reliability, and uh, uh, reliability because the machine's more complicated. And so what we do is uh, give a guy an alternative to uh, his unit where he can work on it himself. So I'd like to kind of do a brief description of exactly what we do to improve the performance of your machine and the reliability and the life, extend the life. One of the things we do here is we take the switches, or we try to get as much common parts as we can. Now, I, I, let me grab the switches here. Now, yes, these may not look that good, but we can get these in an auto parts for around six, seven dollars, and they're 50 amp switches. So, in the middle of the night, you're out of town, 
and your switches go out, it sure, it sure would be nice just to go get a local switch and put it on there and finish the job. So in some cases it's a big deal, sometimes it's not. But here's the original switches, they're nice switches, but you just can't find them local. And they, were, they actually were used in conjunction with these relays, so we eliminated the relays in these switches and just went with high amp, 50 amp switches. Like I say, it's not a major thing, but in some cases that's a big deal. Another thing we did here, we eliminated the chemical injection system altogether, and we put a lower gallons per hour flow meter on here. And then you can actually run this thing here at uh, two and a half, and your little five gallon jug will last like two hours before you have to keep refilling it. And you can run a higher concentration in your chemical, inje chemical injection jug. We'll now go around here on the other side of the unit and uh, show what else we did to it. It's right around here. Uh, I'll post a picture of before so you can get a before, but here's the after of the wiring. We've eliminated a tremendous amount of wires off the unit because they're just not needed anymore. Um, and I'll show you a picture of the before, how what we did here to clean all this up where it's a lot more easier to get to. Uh, when we were, the heated, the radiator heat exchanger, which was heated off the engine coolant water, was sitting right here. So once we eliminated that, it opened this all up so we can get in there a lot better. One thing on this particular unit here we found is this hose here was so close to this exhaust manifold is that uh, it was very hard and brittle. Now we're going to put a fire sleeve over this. We've already replaced the hose, but I left the fire sleeve off so you could see where this hose is. Like I said, here's the exhaust manifold right here. Another thing we did with this machine is that the actual wiring harness was coming right through here, going right over the top of the exhaust manifold. So we ordered a new wiring harness for it because it, had, it was so hot it was fairly brittle. We rerouted the wiring harness on the outside of the housing because there's a cover that goes right here. We took the Zims unit here, Zims, which was originally over here on this side, which, was, which had heat putting put on it. We've moved it over here to the outside where it's in cold air and there's no heat on the system anymore. And that helps that from having any problems. Now, let me see here. What else before we go to the other side, Jack? It's opened up a lot more, you know, as far as being able to get in there and work on it. As you'll see, the actual exhaust diverter is removed. You'll see that better on the other side. So let's go around to the other side, Jack. And uh, let me go over what we did here. Here is, like I said, we've converted to cold water. So now this, your float box here has got cold water in it. The valve inside of it operates with cold water. So it extends the life of that valve. And this has always got cold water. If you come down here, look how much more room's in the unit once we remove the heat exchanger. And here is where the exhaust diverter was located. Now this is a Nissan A15 engine. And uh, the specification says that a minimum of a 2 inch exhaust should be used on this engine. Now this engine did have a 1 inch and I'm not really sure why it was at 1 inch and it still may not have really caught a major problem with the engine. But we just go back to what the factory specifications are for a Nissan engine and they recommend a two inch exhaust. So as you see, this is now where we bypassed the heat exchanger, the, uh, yeah, the heat exchanger. Okay, now let's go back over here to the pump jack. I, the pump is really simplified. I don't, I'm not sure how good you'll be able to see this, but it had two switches on top. It had a lot more devices. It had a chemical injection head that's removed. So everything's completely off this pump, but the cold water inlet and the high pressure out in the pump pumps cold water now. And we actually use the pump to draw the chemical like we do on our TNTs and all of our designs. We never have used any injection pumps. So everything's a lot easier to get to. And uh, let's see what else. The system will, like I say, will be running a little giant heater. Let me show you that. Here's the number four little giant heater. This is what I'll be heating it with now. 
and this burns 0.9 of one gallon of gas per hour under commercial carpet cleaning conditions running a high flow wand. Or it'll run two standard flow wands, you know, you can still run two wands on this unit. And uh, everything simplifies the unit. And uh, so next I want to show you uh, the actual parts I took off, so we'll see in the next segment.